okay as the video may or may not describe I uh, accurately I'm walking through wall township and I'm on a place on the property of a place that I'm I'm gonna flip it around maybe you could see it no you're definitely not gonna be able to see that um, so I'm on the grounds of a place where I've been many times before. It's the Allaire Community Farm. Um, maybe you'll be able to see this though. It says organic. I just don't have the headlamp today so I can't get it on. But um, it says organic produce for sale. So, oh, you know what? This car coming by. Yeah, there we go. Thank you car, I think. Um, basically, Allaire Community Farm is really cool they have csa and if i was a little more familiar with the people that are here i wouldn't feel too scared to trespass in the past i've trespassed onto farms but um i'm actually just going to keep walking let me turn it around though hold on oh, hold on what's going on here? all right so I'm going to keep walking because there's actually another point of interest that I want to point out that occurred to me that I could combine on this video. But I'm going to tell you a little bit about Allaire Community Farm. Um, they not only have a CSA component and sometimes they, one time I went there, one of the four times I went there they actually had an event, they have horse farm and um, some kind of like riding, I forget if it's a birthday party, I'm not sure. But they also have like a petting zoo component. So, and they have alpacas, they have, um, I think most of the animals too are rescue animals that were abused or something bad happened to them. They're farm animals mostly. But um, they're promoting education and other um, things that are just good to know about the planet, bring kids into the fold make it interesting for them um, people could get organic produce so anyways you know there's tons of farms like this out in the world maybe not tons but there are plenty of farms that are these small scale farms that um, you know so it's not like it's one of a kind really but it's still um... oh yeah they're playing Jack Johnson music here that was another nice thing about this walk I heard it in the distance Okay, let me get I in this video. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Glad you like this middle of the night stuff. Oh yeah. yeah there's some people playing music. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, he's playing some Jack Johnson. Right, I'm gonna keep walking. So, um, I'm not sure, was at Smith's Farm Market, there's a guy playing guitar for a small crowd. Uh, anyways, alright, so where was I? Let's think. Carlos, think, think, think. Alright, I was talking about Allaire Community Farm, which I'm walking away from now. Um, if it's during the day, I definitely try and get a tour of the animals they have there. But I don't want to wake the animals up, they need their rest too, they're busy entertaining kids and whatnot during the day. Um, but, um, yeah, it just, to me, this walk, I, I, uh, imagined myself not really needing to do anything, not needing a backpack, not needing to even really be walking, because it wasn't always about the walk, it was just about being able to survive without a car, which plenty of farms are able to do because they grow their own food, and theoretically, if the apocalypse that plenty of people think about the doomsday if that came plenty of farms that I'm, I've been stopping at would make out really well relative to everybody else and the idea is not the distance I'm going here we'll get more light now if it goes backwards I think hey there I am all right maybe not but um the idea wasn't the distance I go, but the amount of time I could go without a car. 
and that includes the food I eat, not just the distance I walk, but the food I'm eating came from places that didn't depend on a car. Um, but for in order for that to happen, and in order for us to be resilient, we need lots and lots of community-scale farms that um, provide all our needs, and really we get in a balance back with the planet. So that's something I really wanted to highlight, and I shouldn't put it in past tense because I'm still I still have a week left of the walking at least um, to get to Cape May. And there are a couple farms I might swing by, but I can definitely point out that message because long term these pipelines and resources like that that are trying to be shipped through coming from far away, the only way we really can ever fight that um, systemically is if we're resilient and living locally where we're not depending on it. Because eventually conventional natural gas that we get now will run out and we'll either need frack natural gas or we'll need renewables, which I think is what most people push for. Um, but we can jumpstart being sustainable sooner by growing our own food or getting connected, moving a few degrees closer to, the, to your food. So instead of being five or six degrees connected to your food, or maybe even more, um, try and be like two degrees so you know the guy who knows the guy who gets the food um, anyways that's just some thoughts on that so I also wrote for this video title I like following through uh, with what I put on there and not leaving anything hanging that's me for those of you who have been tortured through my videos um, the uh, let's see what's, what's behind me too I don't know if you could catch it much I get the light right. Also, it's lightning right now. That's that's just I guess, the light blinking. But I'm by the Alaire, I think Alaire Wall Township Municipal Buildings. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's better view. Actually, let me see if I could like what Jeff wrote. No, I wrote Citizens Media TV. All right, um, where was I? All right, well, I am right here and my top priority is to stay safe. And actually, tonight, this is the first time I've worn one. I don't really like having them on, but I'm wearing a guard uh, uh, safety vest. So, yeah, here I am, the light is bright, I'm orange. All right, let me get that off. Uh, um, farms are good, that's what I was saying, more or less. For, farms are needed regardless of what else we're doing. We need, to, or we need to be able to forage our food. Somehow, food is top priority. So figuring that out and making that as local as possible, everything else just starts to be fixed in a lot of ways. Um, I guess it makes a lot of sense that it's pretty high up uh, or low down, depending on how you look at it, on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, without it, all these other things, all these ideas that we like to float as humans who spend a lot of time thinking, they don't, they don't amount to much if we don't have, okay, if we don't have um, food in our stomachs. So I feel like shelter is also high up there, at least when you're in a very cold environment. Um, but depending where you are, food is either number one or number two. Uh, if you include, ooh, this guy's going fast. All right, oh, it's a cop. Hope he's not upset with being videoed. Find out soon. Um, <clears throat> all right, so acts of random kindness. I think I wrote that on the video description. So to me, an act of random kindness is huge because um, you're really seeding love into the world. You're seeding positivity that in a lot of ways is just lacking because nobody is really that familiar with a lot of people you interact with. Um, and most random interactions are, they could be friendly, but there's plenty that aren't. Um, but I'm coming up on a place 
I'm in Wall Township. I'm walking through Wall, or through a Wall, as I said, and further down Alaire Road from Alaire Community Farm, there's actually, if I looked at a map just before, it's a pond, but um, part of that pond is, um, there's a bridge over it, because it turns into a creek, and, ooh, okay. Um, there's always, when I'm going by it, because my aunt lives out this way, there's always a guy fishing a certain time of day. And he's great, because he always, you know, you're fishing, I guess you have a lot of free time. But he's right on the bridge, and hopefully I get to there before I'm done with this video. Um, and I think of things to talk about, because I'm not a silent walker. But this guy, he always waves both directions, people driving by, has a big smile on his face, you know, he's, he's just in a different zone than I think most of us, and I don't know what his reasons are that he's just generally happy, you know, maybe he doesn't even need a reason, maybe he hasn't been saved from close catastrophe, maybe, or maybe he just feels blessed to be alive. Uh, without having some almost tragedy happen or something really good happen for him. But whatever it is, he's a source. He's created as himself like a point in the universe that is giving off very positive energy. It always makes my day when I drive by and see him. And it's probably been a dozen times now. So he's definitely committed to waving to people and I, it, I'd be foolish to think that it's just me. Um, so a lot of people are getting uh, this guy's positivity and hopefully it breaks through whatever they're doing when they're speeding down this Alaire Road um, They're getting a lot out of it uh, And he, he's really creating uh, vibrations creating new uh, Kind of I think my one professor would say new chains of causality in the universe that are rippling through and people just bring with them after that interaction their day is just a little bit better and that's really powerful especially considering that this guy's been doing it for at least I, I'd say two years because I feel like I've seen I saw him last summer and maybe the summer before um, and yeah it's pretty powerful because there's plenty of people that could be in a similar situation where they're whether they're a security guard at a building or wherever, where they're not super jolly like this guy is. Um, and it's maybe outside of the social norm to wave at cars going by. Um, whereas a security guard, you know, plenty of them are friendly, but maybe to go above and beyond somehow. Um, uh, other jobs where you're not as friendly, but you could be it. You know, you could buck the trend and do it anyways. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I I wish that I was doing this part during the day because I'd love to talk to him and find out um, or just have him wave at the camera and just so we could get him. It's definitely, I think, a news story worthy of reporting. Um, I know off and on I hear cries from people for there to be more positive news because people get sick of the negative news. Um, and I'm even a little sick of my own videos on pipeline stuff for a lot of reasons, but including that it's just negative stuff that we're trying to stop and I'm glad we're standing up to it. Um, but we still have to seed the world we want to live in, which doesn't mean just stopping negative things. It means actually creating positive things. So, um, I'm not sure how far we are from, the, you know, I'm going to look at my map, and it might pause the video by accident. Nope. Okay, hold on. Let me see. All right. Looks like I'm back. Um, and it works out because I'm actually quite a bit closer to where the man I was just speaking about. Um, I'd love to be able to give him a name, but maybe I can give him a name. He could be kind guy. The kind man who waves, the waving man. Um, and actually, I did say sends out positive vibrations by just doing what he does and waving people as they go by. So maybe we'll call him Wave 
uh, wave vibration guy or something. I don't know. What's it going to say? There's definitely something there. Some kind of idea can come from that. So, now, I would... There's almost enough light pollution to let, like, I can see the lake or the pond pretty clearly. Um, but I don't think you're going to be able to see it. Darn. Unless the car goes by. But anyways, you might be able to even hear right now there's lots of uh, wildlife. So this is not under threat as far as I know. No more than a road being here already, but at this point the ecosystem's adapted. But I'm right by... Um, there's something pond. Can't remember the name, but um, oh, and I think I almost hear a little waterfall, but over on the other side. So this is a. Uh, actually, I'm gonna jog too, because this is a narrow part. I hear that water too. So on the other side. Ooh, some lightning flashes. <sighs> um, so yeah, this is where, somewhere right around here, the man uh, is just fishing. He always fishes on the, uh, let's think, the westbound side of Valera Road. And, you know, he just waves at everybody going by. So I think that's pretty cool. It's worth an honorable mention as far as I'm concerned. And, um, yeah, so you never really know what kind of positive things you're going to send out there when you leave your comfort zone especially, but um, it's worth it, you know, and I've had on this journey and kind of things happening to me in a few years before embarking on this particular part of my life, um, I've found that every time I reach out to a person or whatever it is that I have an idea and I'm like, oh no, that's ridiculous, don't do that. It always ends up, some something grows from it, something that goes forward. So, you know, it's good to challenge yourself uh, if you have an idea to go with it. You know, all that stuff that they always tell us about following your dreams. Um, I think people get blunted to that because so many things do go poorly. But it really does work out. There's so many inspirational people that do say, no, follow your dreams. And I don't think they're up there bullshitting us. They're not uh, hoaxes, usually. Some of them may be, but plenty of them are not. And I think there's really something to it. When If we all started being like that, we'd see huge changes. But um, those of us who are going out and doing very different things and doing dreams that are following through with dreams that are also uh, socially conscientious and not very selfish dreams that take away from the whole but people that if we all really did really self-conscientious work that was really what our passions were um, and we weren't deluded by people who just accept the reality we're in, but we're actually changing it, I really think things would go very far, very quickly, in a different direction. Uh, and I've been thinking about this recently. I'll say it here. Um, I like flipping a lot of statements and inverting them because I think we're in a very inverted time. So... The saying usually is it's not a matter of if but when, when we're talking about things. And right now you can think of it in terms of it's not a matter of if but when, when we, um, <clears throat> you know, destroy ourselves or when is climate change going to get too much or when is pollution going to get too much that mammals can't endure. Um, I think really right now it's a matter of if not when because the way we are now we haven't made any major changes. We're still on the same track. Same, I don't know if the, we just saw the lightning. But um, it's really a matter of us just deciding to change. Not that we have oh, a few more years and then we, if we beat that, then we'll, you know, we'll be okay. Or if we could get these things passed 
and the UN or whatever preoccupation I think that we're used to putting things off into the future and thinking that um, oh, it's a few more years we still have a few years it's we got to act like it's now because if we don't the new now is just going to keep coming and we're going to keep thinking oh the future will solve the problems of the present and the present has to solve the problems of the present and then the future will be a future that much more worth living in and that much more of a place for humans so i really don't think we uh we have the luxury of thinking about a when it's a if and if can happen any time any place i'm here doing something a bit out of the normal for our time which is walking at 12 30 a.m for a activist cause most activist work isn't in the middle of the night and I don't even know if you'd call this that much activist, but I'm doing my thing. Um, but this walk is not a matter of when. I, it's just I chose to do it and I'm doing it. So I think that's really how we have to, I don't know why I keep zooming in on Whole Foods. I feel like I had a point to make about Whole Foods, but um, I spend a lot of money there, unfortunately. Um, I'd much rather be spending my money at a farm a local farm but they're just not readily available enough which gets back to uh, <clears throat> what I was saying earlier about um, oh, is, are they still open? I think Acme might still be open oh no it's after 12 they're probably closed sorry I minimized that and uh, got cut out alright um, I don't know what else to say except for I'm getting close to my destination. I think I have about a mile to go, by a little less, and uh, I am going to. Hold on. I'm gonna say good night and say that I am going to do the right thing and not set an alarm for the morning. I could tell already I'm very exhausted. I didn't get a whole week to recharge my batteries. It was anything but. Um, so tonight I did a fair amount of walking, but nothing compared to what I'll be doing the next several days as I head into Ocean County, Monmouth, uh, from Monmouth County head into Ocean County and then Atlantic County and then Cape May County walking all the way to the ends. Um, I also want to walk the South Jersey gas pipeline. So I want to be coherent during this time too and be safe. So that requires me to get a good sleep. So I'm going to just sleep tomorrow and if I don't start walking until one in the afternoon, so be it. I do have a long walk plan for myself tomorrow. I've got tight time budget. But, um, you know, if I, what's the point if I can't even do it through the end? So I'm going to rest and resuscitate, I believe is the word I'm looking for. So, um, let me wait for these guys to pass. All right. But, um, I'm going to stop there. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for watching, listening. Um, I'm glad somebody out there likes the middle of the night videos. I don't know how many more there'll be. Um, I'm gonna actually just point the video up at the sky for a minute, just in case you get to see the lightning. Pretty nice, it's been accompanying me the whole time. Yeah, you know what, there's just a flash and I didn't see it on my camera. So I'm gonna take that to be that it's not able to record it. All right, but I am going to concentrate. I just crossed Route 35 and I'm not too far from my destination. So thank you for tuning in. I hope a longer video is able to draw more people in. I. Uh, 
I still have mixed feelings about it because it's just me babbling for longer. But um, anyways, yeah, so thanks for joining me on my adventure for a little bit. And we'll see what happens in the days to come. I've got some pretty exciting stuff uh, in my head. I don't know if it'll come to reality, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how adventurous I get and how many opportunities open up. All right. I will talk to you later. Bye.